When I first saw the photo of George, his image was etched in my mind. The hopeless look on his face left a feeling I could not define. How could a world be so evil to destroy such an innocent child? How could they put something precious in a chair so barbaric and vile? For years I kept George on the mirror, a reminder I should not forget. Something unknown would compel me to study his sad silhouette. I ask God, why does this picture linger and haunt me inside? George is dead 80 years, even longer. His accusers have now long since died. By now, they've all stood in judgment in the courtroom of angels and men. Then God said, you're missing something. Take a look at his picture again. I see that he's small for his summers, meek and humble, fragile and thin. God said, look a bit deeper. You're not seeing the secret therein. I know that he lived in a time when his color was cursed and reviled. God said that's not the message that makes his whole journey worthwhile. I see that he's striped like an inmate. His number is 26-0. I see that he's left all alone in need of a rescuing hero. God said I never left him. His soul I kept tight in my hand. This picture has something to tell you. I hope that you'll soon understand. Well, if it isn't his age or his color, and it isn't his weight or his size, God said, why can't you see it? Look deeply in George Stinney's eyes. George is not sad for himself, not his family or even his plight. George is not holding back anger. He has no panic or fright. George isn't trying to flee, nor giving up hope to survive. George sees the man taking pictures that's compassion you see in his eyes. He is sad for the things that he is, all the things that this man cannot see. He is sad for the man taking pictures who was blind and will always be. God said the color you're missing in the black and white picture you view is that this blind photo taker is just as guilty as you. You too have taken your pictures pixelated in digital light. You too think you see rainbows. In fact, you only see night. You too have passed down your judgments on those who did not the crime. You too executed the stranger with guilt you yourself have assigned. You too have missed Mona Lisa's when their dresses were dirty and torn. You too have dismissed Michelangelo's because of the color they're born. You too have silenced Beethoven's due to accents uncommon and strange. You too have muzzled Mozart's because of their odd sounding name. You too have trampled on Einstein's because of the style of their hair. You too have rejected Da Vinci's because of the clothes that they wear. You too have enslaved Cleopatra's because of the girth of their hips. You too have maligned my Godiva's because of the size of their lips. You too have overthrown kings for fashion, freckles, and scars. You too are assassins of dreamers, not accepting them for who they are. You too have crucified saviors because of the sinners they love. You too have sentenced to death masterpieces you had no use of. George was a migrant from glory in a caravan headed for home. But the man in his eyes that George sympathized will answer to God at the throne. We all have taken our selfies, our snapshots have often forsook. To notice that uncommon beauty is beauty so oft overlooked. We all have mistreated some young one who we saw but never did see. Maybe you're sitting beside one today not seeing their divinity. When you look at the photo of George, and you look at the world through his eyes. Pity the man with the camera who let something so innocent die. When you consider the story of George and you see there's some wise resolution, pity the souls you sat on death row and usher them to execution. And as you take your own selfies, make sure your lenses are clean and look for the beauty in others that often expires unseen.